Hi, this is Charlie Sutterfield. Today we are going to look at creating a custom V groove that we can use for a wall reveal. And I want to start by explaining where the wall reveals happen and how they happen, and then we'll actually make our custom profile or our custom reveal. So I'm going to open a new project just so that I can show you where these guys are. So over under the purple R, I'm going to click that once. I get the drop down. I slide down to new and then I slide over to project because I want to show you in the commercial template where these things are. So just click on project. Now I'm in the new project dialog box. I'm going to click on browse so that I can go to the Imperial Library. I want to start by using a commercial template. So I select that one. I click open. Now I'm back in my new project dialog box. What I've done so far is just change my template here. So you can see if I scroll over move that mouse out of the way. If I scroll over, um, you can see that I'm using the commercial default. And I'm going to select um, project. That's the default. I don't want to create a new template. I just want to create a project. So I click OK. And then Revit's going to chug along for a minute. And here I am in a new project. So I'm going to uh, just draw a chunk of wall just so that we can watch what happens with it. So I'm going to click on wall, and I'm just going to use the generic 8-inch wall for this. Uh, it's not a big deal. I'm going to go in and just draw a chunk of it and zoom in on that a little bit. And then what I want to do is actually edit that wall type. And so um, I'm going to go in and click on edit type. That's in my properties. And once I'm in there, I can edit the structure. And so uh, that's what I'm after. In my structure, that's where I can add my reveal. And I'll show you how it behaves once we get it in there. So click on Edit. And then the Reveal button is down here at the bottom right-hand corner of this uh, window for Edit Assembly. But it's grayed out. I can't select it. Um, the reason why that is is because I need to be in a preview mode. I need to be able to see the wall uh, to put that reveal in. So I'm going to go ahead and click Preview. That's in the bottom left-hand corner of this window. And that just opened um, this preview. But I, I need to uh, make sure that it's set to Section. If it's set to Plan, which is the default view, then um, the Reveal button will still be grayed out. You have to make sure that it's set to a Section view instead of a Plan view. So I'm going to go ahead and click Reveals. And now within Reveals, I need to add a profile because uh, the reveal is going to eat away at the wall. And so I need to uh, define what shape I want that to be in. So I'm going to add a profile. And I click my um, default there. And the ones that are built in are just vinyl base. And I actually want a brick course uh, to be my reveal. So I need to load a new profile. So I click on Load Profile. And this takes us right back to that Imperial Library. And if I scroll down in here, I actually have a Profiles folder. So I click on Profiles and open that. And then in the Profiles folder, if I slide down, I've got one choice for reveals. My Reveal Brick course is the only thing that I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click Open. And so now when I'm in my Profiles, in my uh, reveals dialog box here, I've got a one brick, two brick, and three brick profile that are available. I'm going to go ahead and put a one brick profile at three feet above uh, the base of the wall. And then I'm going to add another one. So click there. And this time I'm going to put a three brick profile. And I'm going to put that at uh, six feet above the base of the wall. And I'm going to click Apply. And you can see that those guys are over here in my preview. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now, as I scroll in to uh, blow that wall up a little bit, you can see that those reveals are there. Don't worry about the fact that you see the profile of the whole reveal. So it's not just what it's eaten into the wall. You're seeing the outside edges of that, too. So you're seeing, in essence, how big the profile or how deep the pro profile could be. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and OK. And now let's look at this in 3D. Let's make sure our wall type changed here. Uh, I need to scroll that around, or orbit that around. And yeah, so you can see that I do have my reveals now on my wall type. So um, 
what I wanted to show you with this one was that when we do that in the wall type, it doesn't matter how long the wall is, that reveal is going to happen the entire length of the wall. Um, that's how it comes in, right? So if I wanted to grab the end of that, I've got some drags that I can use that will let me shorten that up if I want to. But what about a vertical reveal? What if I wanted something going up and down and to create a grid work kind of thing? Well, I can do that. So where I would do that would be in the wall tool. If I click the drop down there, I've got a reveal down at the bottom of that drop down. Click on that and um, we'll go ahead and put one in and then we'll go and see what it is. So there's my reveal. I just placed it, but it's a big one, isn't it? So uh, that reveal, if I click on edit type, um, is the default profile, which is pretty big. So I'm going to change that to a one brick reveal. So again, I just clicked on type property or edit type, and now I'm in my type properties, and now I can change it from the default profile to a brick profile. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. And so now that's a little bit more reasonable, and it kind of matches up with what we were doing with the other uh, reveals. So what I want to do next is open up that uh, brick reveal family and take a look at how they've set up the geometry. And that's going to help us to understand what we need to do in um, our custom reveal family. So I'm going to go up to the purple R again, click that to get a drop down, and I'm going to open the um, brick reveal family. So I click on the family. In my imperial library, I need to scroll down and select profiles and click open. And I'm just repeating those steps. And then reveal course brick and click open. This time in the family editor, what I'm looking at is that same rectangle that we saw when we were uh, looking at our wall profile. So um, I want to turn on some reference planes here so that you can see what's going on. Uh, the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to hover over level 1, and I'm going to um, click on that. And then up here in my, um, let me expand this a little bit, up here in Visibility Graphics Overrides for that plan view, I'm going to click Edit. And my Annotation Categories, click on that, and then turn on Reference Planes, and click OK. And now you can see what's going on. Let me shrink that back. Uh, now you can see what's going on. So when I put um, those brick reveal courses into the wall, it, w it knew how deep to make them based on this dimension. So the crosshair that's formed by these two reference planes, the green dashed lines, that's where um, that profile is going to start. So if I say place the profile three feet above the base of the wall, then it's the horizontal green dashed line there that's going to be at three feet. So if I wanted to center that um, profile, then I'm going to have to do some math based on how tall my bricks are and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm headed toward is um, it'd probably make more sense if on our V groove, we actually set it up so that it comes in with the, the point of the V on um, the elevation line instead of the bottom of the V. And the other thing is that this um, green line, the vertical green line here, represents the face of the wall. And that'll be a little bit more obvious when we get into the, the new family editor. But it represents the face of the wall so that the one foot indent is the, I'm sorry, the one inch indent is the one that's depicted right there between the green line and the back of the reveal. So. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you in here is the um, types that they've got set up. So click on the types up there in the upper left-hand corner. And in the family types, you'll click this drop-down and be able to see that they've got their one, two, and three brick family types set up. And then within each one of those, they're doing some math um, here. This, this acts like a, um, an Excel spreadsheet. And so, for instance, the brick height is related to um, the length of the brick divided by 3, and the brick depth is 3 and 5 eighths, and all this kind of stuff. Um, that's more complicated than we need to get in hours, uh, because we're just going to do a simple V-groove. It's a good way to start. 
but I wanted you to see this so that you know um, that it can get really complex if you wanted to. So I'm going to cancel my way back out of that. So now that we've taken a look at some of the attributes of a typical reveal family, I'm going to open up a blank reveal family, and I need to get to the template for that. So I'm going to click on the purple R, get that drop down, and this time I'm going to hover over New, and I want a new family because my um, reveal family, my, my vGroove reveal family is going to be its own thing. So I'm going to click on New Family, and then I'm in my Imperial Library again, um, my template file, so I can click on New um, Reveal over here. I've got a blank one, and I can click Open, and there you go, it's in front of us now. And notice that we didn't have to dive down into visibility graphics uh, to turn on our reference planes. Those are already there. And I can click on them, see if they've named them. Yep, they did. So center and uh, wall face. So the names pop up there. That's great. They've also added these callouts here so that it, it tells me that's where the wall is, so I don't get confused. And that's where the wall face is. So uh, life is pretty well set up. So now what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in on this a little bit, and I want to set up one more reference plane here just so that I can uh, gauge how deep my v-groove is going to be. I've just decided at, at random that I want it to be at 3 quarters of an inch back from the face of the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Home tab, and then click on Reference Plane, and now I'll be able to draw a reference plane back here someplace and I only need a little bit of one. So now what I'm going to do is just select it, hit that dimension, because it snapped to the uh, parallel reference plane. Change that to 0, 0, 3 quarters, and say OK. There you go. So now I've got a reference plane, let me zoom in again, that represents the back point of my v-groove. So now I can go to the Home tab and start actually drawing the shape of our V-Groove. So click on Home, and then you want to draw with a line, of course, so draw with that. And I want to set this up so that it's bigger than it needs to be, so that at some point in the future I could set this back further into the wall if I wanted to. Uh, so I'm going to um, draw this line three inches long, I think, would be a good length for this. There we go. And then, uh, sorry, too many, too many escapes. Um, click there, make that one three inches long. There we go. And um, we'll draw this out just a little bit so that we've got an enclosed shape. So there, life is good. So now, let me zoom out again. So the wall face is the vertical green dashed line that goes all the way from the top to the bottom of that view window. And then the point is going to be three-fourths of an inch in from the wall face. And it's oversized so that I could bring it in more if I wanted to. So if I go up into my, um, so now I've got my shape. So now if I go up into my type um, dialog, I'm going to have to name this thing. Because so far, all I've got is a shape. I haven't actually told it that that's my v-groove. So I need to click on new. My... Uh, name of that is going to be vGroove and click OK. Now I can put in all sorts of parameters here if I wanted to. So um, I can add um, inst or family parameters and I can make those anything that I want. I've got types of parameters already set up so if I wanted to put in some dimensions for this thing or some angles or some callouts, whatever, uh, I can certainly do that. I'm not going to do that at this point. Uh, we've got a bunch of those over in the brick reveal, and um, we can sort through those and, and learn more about how that works. So I'm just going to click OK, and then I'm going to load this into my project. So I click Load into Project, and I've got one open, so I click on that. And this is the same project that we had before, actually. So let me go to 3D here and remind you that's what it looks like. And so I'm going to use that uh, reveal tool that's right here. It's a little bit quicker to get to. And there is my vGroove um, reveal profile. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. 
and say OK. And now if I click there, I can see that now I've got a V groove uh, revealing that wall. If I want to put one in horizontally, I can do that same thing. Click on reveal, change it to horizontal. And I should still be on the V groove. Yep, I am. And so now I can put one in wherever I want it. Zoom in on it, and now I've got a nice little V groove detail going on there. Turn on shaded, might look even better. Yeah, sort of. So you get the idea. I can also do that in my wall type. So if I click on that wall to um, kind of short circuit that one, I can go to the edit type, edit structure, turn on preview, and go into that reveals dialog. And so I can add another reveal, um, click on the add button, and then my profile, that V groove is right there. That's what I want. I'm going to make this the five feet say OK. And so there it is in my preview. I'm going to say OK and OK. And so now when I look at my wall, I've got that V groove in there as well. So the one thing left to do is to bounce back over to our um, new reveal family and make sure that we save it. So we would do that just by uh, bouncing back. Um, there's that family. That's what I just created. I would want to go up and do a save as family and put that into my library. Um, now you've got a choice based on how you're doing things. I'm setting things up to be uh, Revit Office Standards. Open that one and I'm going to call this Reveal V Groove. And say OK. And so now I've saved it and I can use that out of my uh, office library whenever I need to.